Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at isotopes. We're going to be finding what isotopes are and how different elements and different atoms can have different types of isotopes. Okay, so the first thing that I want to cover in this lesson is the importance of atomic number. And I've mentioned this in previous lessons, but I want to make sure that you really understand it. So the first thing that we need to know is that every element has a different atomic number. Hydrogen has the atomic number one. Now what this means is that in the universe, all hydrogen atoms, every single one, has got one proton in its nucleus. It cannot have two protons. If it had two protons, it would no longer be hydrogen. So whenever the atomic number changes, the number of protons changes. So we can see if we add an extra proton to hydrogen, we have helium. So all helium atoms have got two protons. If we add another proton, the element changes again and becomes lithium. All lithium atoms have got three protons. So as we change the number of protons, or we change the atomic number, the element also changes. So the number of protons in the nucleus determines which element we have. Now, we know that when the number of protons in an atom changes, the element changes as well. And we also know that the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons, so that will change as well. So if the element changes and has two protons, there'll be two electrons, they must match each other. But the number of neutrons in an atom is variable. So here we've got your typical version of hydrogen. One proton, one electron, no neutrons but it is possible to change the number of neutrons. And when we change the number of neutrons, we have what we call a different isotope. So this is protium. As I've already said, one proton, zero neutrons, one electron. It is the classic version of hydrogen that we expect. But we can add a neutron to this. And when we add a neutron, we have a different isotope. And this version of hydrogen is called deuterium. We have one proton, one neutron, and one electron. And we can have a third isotope as well. We can have two neutrons. So here, one proton, two neutrons, one electron, we have tritium. So these are all different isotopes of hydrogen. The number of protons and electrons never change, only the number of neutrons. So. The properties of each isotope is very similar because each one has the same number of valence electrons, the same the number of electrons in the outer shell. But the number of neutrons in an isotope will change. So isotopes affect the mass number that we see in the periodic table. Now, if we look at the example of chlorine, we can see it has a mass number of 35.5, which you might think is a little bit odd. Now we know it's not possible to have half a proton, and it's not possible to have half a neutron, so how is it possible that chlorine has a mass number of 35.5? Well, the reasoning is that the mass number is the average of the masses of different isotopes of chlorine. So there are different isotopes of chlorine, and the mass number is the average mass of a chlorine atom. So if we had a million chlorine atoms, we added up their individual masses and we took an average, we would find that that average is 35.5. Some of them may be bigger, some of them may be smaller, but the average is 35.5. Now chlorine has got two main isotopes. One of them has got 17 protons and a mass number of 35, which means there'll be 18 neutrons. And the other isotope, has got 17 protons. Again, the proton number must be the same. If the proton number is different, then it is no longer chlorine, and has a mass number of 37, which means there must be 20 neutrons. So, we can see that the number of neutrons varies in each isotope of chlorine. One isotope of chlorine has 18 neutrons in its nucleus, the other has 20 neutrons in its nucleus. But the number of protons and the number of electrons never changes.
Okay, so it's worth understanding as well that some isotopes can be described as radioactive and others are non-radioactive. And we've got two versions of carbon here. One of them is carbon-12, and this is a stable isotope. What this means is that it is not radioactive. It will not decay, it will not change, it will remain stable for eternity. The other isotope, carbon-14, is unstable. This means that it will spontaneously, so instantly, and randomly break down by radioactive decay. And when it does break down by radioactive decay, it will change into a different atom. And carbon-14 will actually change into nitrogen. Now, I'm not going to explain in too much detail what's actually happening in terms of the radioactivity, because that's covered in far more detail in the physics course. But if we look at the symbol for nitrogen, we can see it has a mass number of 14, so the mass has not changed. So the number of particles in the nucleus has remained the same. We can see that the number of protons has increased by 1. So one of the neutrons has changed into a proton during the radioactive decay and a new element has formed. So radioactive isotopes will change and become different elements when they decay by radiation. Radioactive decay also releases energy, which is the main reason that radiation is harmful, because your body is absorbing this energy. Isotopes that decay by radiation are known as radioisotopes. So carbon-14 is a radioisotope. Obviously some more common ones are things like uranium or plutonium, but lots and lots of elements are actually radioactive and there are lots and lots of radioisotopes. Now radioisotopes are actually very useful. It can be used for radioactive dating. So different isotopes have what we call different half-lives. This just means how quickly they decay by radiation. If we know the half-life, if we know how long it takes for an element to decay, then we can work out how old an object is. We can use isotopes to generate electricity. Uranium generates a massive amount of energy when it decays, and this energy can be converted into electricity. Radiation can be used for sterilization. Bacteria is killed by radiation. So if you have to go to hospital and have an operation, the equipment the doctor is going to use on you will have been sterilized by radiation before it is used to operate on you. So radiation can also be used to treat cancer cells. Cancer cells grow and divide quickly. And cancer cells grow and divide faster than normal cells. So radiation can be used to kill them, to stop them dividing, to stop the cancer from spreading. In summary, the number of protons in a nucleus determines which element an atom is. The number of neutrons in a nucleus can vary. Atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons are called isotopes. The mass number found in the periodic table is an average of all of the isotopes for each element. Some isotopes are called radioisotopes, they're unstable and can decay. And there are many different uses of radioisotopes in industry and medicine. So, I hope you now know the basics about isotopes, I hope you know the difference between an isotope and an atom. I hope you can identify different isotopes now. So until next lesson, keep on learning.